Hi, my name's Jackie Klein, and in this series we're going to be taking a close look at what's called performance art, exploring five different ways in which we might encounter it inside and sometimes outside the museum. We'll also be trying to answer questions like, why are these people dancing in a museum? Why am I allowed to touch this? And is this really art? We might think of performance art as different from what's usually shown in art galleries. We're used to museums collecting and showing objects, but performance is live and ephemeral. It happens and then it's gone. But more and more, museums are showing this kind of thing. To start with though, isn't dance something for the theatre? In 2012, leading dance choreographer Anne Theresa de Kiersmacher performed a dance piece here at Tate. This is what she had to say. How to make a dance how to generate vocabulary, how to organise movements in time and in space. That's one of the beautiful things about the body, is that uh, in the body and through movement, through dancing, you can literally embody the most abstract ideas. Giving ideas a physical form, that does sound like art. But still, why not on the stage? Why dance in an art gallery? To find the answer, we need to go back to the 1950s and 60s and one of the most important influences on modern art, the dancer and choreographer Merce Cunningham. Cunningham was hugely important in pioneering a new style of dance or choreography which tried to exist outside the confines of the theatre. In his dances he used everyday movements like walking, leaping and jumping and he collaborated with avant-garde artists and musicians like Robert Rauschenberg and John Cage. John had already talked about the idea of having a music which was not dependent upon the dance, nor the dance dependent upon the music, but which were separate identities which could, in a sense, coexist. Simply uh, being together in the same place and the same time and leaving, leaving space around each art. Before this, dance, music and visuals had been completely intertwined in the theatre, but Cunningham's approach meant they could now operate independently. And that idea has had a huge influence on artists thinking about what the movement of bodies could mean for art. It comes from this book. It's 50 years of Mass Cunningham Dance Company, and uh, there's 300 pictures in it and they are documenting more than 200 projects of Merce Cunningham. The basic idea that we could do a flip book from this book, taking it very seriously as if it was a choreography, that it would start like this, it would end up with this jump, uh, that in the middle we would go through all the pictures. It's very strange as a choreography, but it's not very far from the Merce Cunningham idea somehow on, in how to build movement. Four, three, two, one, zero. Some artists have taken this idea even further, suggesting that art could be about the movement of bodies in space, or about how the public interacts with different works of art. For example, Cuban artist Tanya Bruguera has created a work in which mounted police enter the gallery and determine where the visitors can go. Clear the exit area, please. You have these police who are coming towards you and giving you direction of what to do, where to move, if you have to stand. And they're using actually the horses to make this happen, like they usually do in their everyday job. Sometimes these interventions are really obvious and in your face. Sometimes they're more subtle, but it's not what you expect to see in a museum. They create a disruption in your experience. But that's exactly why they're art, because they're exploring these abstract ideas. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at artists who place their own bodies at the centre of their art. See you then.